Hello, my name is Niara Chandler and I'm in the fifth grade. In honor of Black History Month, I would like to present to you a short biography on mathematician Katherine Johnson. Katherine Johnson was born August 26, 1918 in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. From an early age, Miss Johnson loved numbers. She said, I counted everything. I counted the steps to the road, the steps to church, the number of dishes and silverware I washed. Anything that could be counted, I did, she, Mrs. Johnson. <sighs> Mrs. Johnson was a very smart girl. By the time she was 10 years old, she was a high school freshman. After high school, she went on to graduate summa cum laude from West Virginia State College in degrees in both mathematics and French, but she was only 18. After college, Miss Johnson lived what some might call an ordinary life. She was a wife and mother of three daughters and worked at it as a school teacher for many years. Then in June 1953, she began working at the all-black West Area Computing Section in the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA for short. This agency would later change its name to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration that we now know as NASA. It was there that she became a living computer, a mathematician who solved complex math equations and even invented new math for the engineers she worked with. Some of her more notable accomplishments as a computer include calculating the trajectory for astronaut Alan Shepard, the first American in space. And even after NASA began using electronic computers, the astronaut John Glenn requested that she personally recheck the calculations before his flight aboard the Friendship 7, the mission on which he became the first American to orbit the Earth. If she says they're good, then I'm ready to go, Miss Johnson remembers astronaut Glenn saying. When asked to name her greatest contribution to space, space exploration, Miss Johnson would talk about the calculations that helped sync Project Apollo's lunar module with the lunar, lunar orbiting command and service module. She also worked on the space shuttle and the Earth Resources Technology Satellite, na la later named Landsat, and authored or co-authored 26 research reports. She retired in 1986 after 33 years at Langley. Langley. I loved going to work every single day, she said, in 2015. At age 97, Johnson added another extraordinary achievement to her long list. President Barack Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the high, America's highest civilian honor. Wow. Katherine Johnson passed away February 24th, 2020 at the age of 101. She was truly an amazing African-American woman whose life is an inspiration to us all. More from her life than other notable African-American computers, woman computers, can be found in the book title Hidden Figures and seen in the movie of the same name. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Charlie Aquila. I am in fourth grade in Mr. Boyle's class. Hi, I'm Gianna. I'm in Miss Myers class in first grade. Today we will be teaching you about Alice Coachman. Alice Coachman was born on November 9, 1923 in Albany, Georgia. Alice was a very good athlete from a young age. However, when she was growing up, she often wasn't allowed to train or compete in sporting events because of her race. After high school, after a high school coach noticed her talent, she helped, he helped her practice and become better. She was given a scholarship um, from the athlete department in Tuskegee Institute. Over the next several years, she became a national champion in racing and the high jump. In 1948, Alice went to the uh, now? London. London. London Open Olympics. She set 
set, set, sent. Nope. Set. Set. set a rec- record in the high jumps and was the first black woman to win. Win a and an Olympic. Olympic. Olymp- Olympic gold medal. Good. After returning home, she finished her good degree at Albany State. She became the first African American to get a deal from Coca Cola to be their spokesman. Later in the, her life, she set up the F- Alice Coachman Track and Field Foundation to help support young athletes and Olympic veterans. How about Olympic veterans? Olympic veterans. Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman was born on January 26, 1892 in Texas. She was one of 13 children. She learned to work hard from a young age to help support her. Bessie graduated from Missionary Baptist Church in Texas, but could not afford to go to college. In 1915, when she was 23 years old, she moved to Chicago and lived and work with her brother. She was, she worked as a manicurist. In Chicago, Bessie began listening to stories of pilots from World War I. She began to have a great interest in flying planes, which is known as aviation. Yeah. Because she was black, schools in the United States wanted to allow her to train to be a pilot. Bessie moved to France to attend school there. She was ta- she taught herself French and and earned her license in only seven months. On April 30, 1926, Bessie was killed in an accident during a flight rehearsal for a student show. She was a pioneer. For women who wanted to become pilots. Ernest Ernie Banks, the circle. Ernie Banks was born on January 31st, 1931. Ernie Banks was a great ball player in high school and eventually signed with the Afri- African American baseball team, the Kansas City Monarchs. Ernie Banks signed with the Chicago Cubs in 1953. He was their first African American baseball player. Ernie played with the Chicago Cubs for all 19 years of his career. He had 512 home runs and was elected into the Baseball Hall of, of Fame. Ernie Banks is known as Mr. Coon. Banks was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. Ernie Banks passed away as one of the greatest baseball players in 2015. Harriet Tubman was a slave. She escaped Maryland and ran away to Pennsylvania. Harriet Tubman was the most famous conductor for the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad was a secret route to get slaves to the north. He saved 70 people over 13 trips. Later in her life, she spoke up for women's rights. I hope you liked my facts about Harriet Tubman. Bye.
Levi Josephine McDonald, known as Josephine Baker. Levi Josephine McDonald, known as Josephine Baker, was born in St. Louis, Missouri on June 3, 1906. Josephine moved to Paris in the 1920s. While in Paris, Josephine became a very famous singer and actress. While performing, Josephine refused to perform in front of a segregated audiences. Josephine was the first African American to start in major motion pictures due to in 1934. Josephine Baker returned to the United States in the 1950s and played a large role in the civil rights movement. Josephine walked with Martin Luther King Jr. in the March on Washington in 1963. Josephine Baker passed away April 12, 1975. Thanks for learning about Josephine Baker with me. Hi, my name is Giselle, and for Black History Month, I would like to honor Katherine Johnson. Katherine was born August 26, 1918. In her younger years, she was good at math, numbers, counting, and equations. She skipped several grades and had to move to another town to go to high school and college. She went to West Virginia State University, 1933 to 1937, then finished at West Virginia University, 1939 to 1940. After college, Catherine became a teacher and loved her job. In the 1950s, Catherine became a aerospace technologist when she joined NASA. She was a mathematician calculating long series of numbers. Two friends that worked at NASA. Her career involved by being promoted time and time again. She worked on the space shuttle. She worked on a satellite project that searched the globe for underground minerals and other natural resources from space. She saved Apollo 13. Some moments in Catherine's career that stood out are she calculated the path for Freedom 7, the spacecraft that put the first U.S. astronaut in space by Alan B. Shepard, Jr. The following year, at the request of John Glenn, he did the same. It would not take off unless he, her calculations were correct. In 2015, Catherine received the Presidential Medal of Freedom by the first Black President Barack Obama. The movie that depicted her life called Hidden Figures came out in 2016. Catherine was born as Catherine Goebel. She graduated high school at 14 and college at 18. She had three children and was remarried to James Johnson. She worked at NASA from 1958 until retirement in 1986. It was known as a human computer. She passed away February 24, 2020. Catherine never liked taking any credit because in her words, it was never just one person. Hi, my name is Jack DeBoer and I'm in second grade. Today, I'm going to tell you about a little bit about Mae Jemison. Mae Jemison was born on October 17, 1956 in Alabama. At three years old, she moved to the south side of Chicago. While in grade school, she spent a lot of time in her school library reading about science. She was especially interested in astronomy. She was a very good student, and after high school, she went to Stanford and Cornell Universities. 
She became a doctor and also volunteered with the Peace Corps, where she helps people receive medicine overseas. She applied to NASA's astronaut training program and was the first African-American woman accepted into the program. After a year of training, she became the first African-American woman astronaut. In 1992, Dr. Jemison finally got the chance to fly into space with six other astronauts aboard the Endeavour and became the first African-American woman in space. Here's a picture of Dr. Jemison. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Achal Singh. I'm in second grade Mrs. Toliet's class. I'm here to talk about Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was born in February 4th, 1913. She was a black woman activist whose actions led to Montgomery bus boycott. She loved the color pink. One day when she was traveling in a bus, a white man asked for her seat and she refused it because her feet were hurting. She was sent to jail. This led to Montgomery bus boycott, which went from December 5th, 1955 to December 20th, 1956. What is a society that's divided by race called? Racial segregation. How you can help in ending racial injustice? Um, educate myself, safely join a protest, have dif difficult conversations with friends, family, and classmates. Thank you.